script. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're tackling a neat little problem from LeetCode called Valid Word. It's labeled as easy, and it's a great exercise in careful string checking. Let's break it down together. Script. So the task is pretty straightforward. We're given a string, and we need to figure out if it's a valid word based on a few specific rules. First, it has to be at least three characters long. Second, it can only contain English letters or numbers. No special characters like hashtags or exclamation points allowed. And finally, it must have at least one vowel and at least one consonant. If all these conditions are met, we return true, otherwise it's false. Script. Let's walk through an example. Take the word 234 ADAS. First check. Is it long enough? Yep, it's seven characters, which is more than three. Okay. Next, are all the characters valid? Let's see. Numbers, an uppercase A, lowercase d, A, S. Looks good, only letters and digits. Perfect. Now for the last two checks. Does it have a vowel? Yes, it has A and A, and does it have a consonant? Yes, it has D and S. Since it passes all four checks, this word is valid, and the answer is true. Script. Now for a simple case that fails, the word B3. Right off the bat we check the length. It's only two characters long, but the rule says it needs a minimum of three, so we don't even need to check for vowels or consonants. It fails the first test, so the answer is immediately false. Script. Okay, so how do we solve this efficiently? The best way is a simple one-time traversal. We can go through the word character by character, just once. The main idea is to use a couple of Boolean flags, you know, true or false variables, to keep track of whether we've found a vowel and whether we've found a consonant. As we loop, we'll also make sure every character is valid. If we ever find a character that's not allowed, we can stop right there and return false. Script. All right, here's what that logic looks like in Python. This code comes straight from the Leet Code editorial. We'll break down the key parts on the next slide, so don't worry about memorizing it all at once, just get a feel for the overall structure. Script. Let's zoom in on how this code works. First, we have that quick check for the length. If it's less than three, we're done. Then, we set up our two trackers, one called has vowel, and one called has consonant, and we initialize them both to false. Next comes the main loop that goes through each character. Inside the loop, we first check if the character is a letter. If it is, we then check if it's a vowel by converting it to lowercase and seeing if it's in our vowel string. If so, we flip our has vowel flag to true. If it's a letter but not a vowel, it must be a consonant, so we flip the has consonant flag. Now, what if the character wasn't a letter in the first place? The else if part checks if it's not a digit. If it's neither a letter nor a digit, it must be an invalid character like a symbol, so we return false immediately. Finally, after the loop finishes, we just need to return whether both of our flags, has vowel and has consonant, are true. Script. So what about performance? The time complexity is big O of n, where n is the number of characters in the word. This is because in the worst case, we have to look at every single character exactly once. The space complexity is big O of 1, or constant space. This is fantastic. It means that no matter how long the word is, we only use a fixed tiny amount of extra memory for our two Boolean flags. The input word's size doesn't change how much extra space we need. Script. So to wrap it all up, this problem is a great reminder to be methodical. We just translated the list of rules directly into code. The most efficient way to do that was a single loop, which keeps our solution fast. And we saw how simple Boolean flags are a perfect tool for keeping track of conditions like have I seen a vowel yet? Script. I hope this explanation was clear and helpful. If it was, a like or a subscribe would be amazing. If you have another way to solve it, drop it in the comments below. And hey, if you're feeling extra supportive, the Boba Fund is always open. Thanks for watching. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next one.